All right, so what we intend to do now is to put government's policy in perspective uh, because it looks as if a number of people have applauded governments uh, this particular policy, but how are the farmers themselves or people who are uh, the body that are going to be working directly with government on this policy, how are they taking it? We've been joined in studio by Edward Karewa. He's the General Secretary for the Agricultural Workers Union, GAU, and uh, we're going to be putting a few questions to him. And we also have Charles... Uh, Nyaba, his programs officer for the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. And um, yes, to start with, are, are you part of the associations or individuals who have applauded government on this initiative? If so, how beneficial do you think is going to be to your associations? Starting with you, Mr. Kairo. Well, um, we have in the past been concerned about the manner in which we treat agriculture uh, as a, a driving force for our economic development. So if in the course of that we have a policy that seeks to uh, you know, enhance agricultural production, certainly it must be a laudable one. Now if you look at this uh, specific one, which has to do with planting for food and jobs, you know, it tries to cure to uh, uh, ends that is food and then uh, jobs so certainly it must be a laudable one is, is this okay yes uh, mr nyaba what's your take on, on it yeah i think uh, my take representing smallholder farmers in ghana is not different from what uh, mr edward carway said uh, the problems in the agriculture sector cast through from production processing and marketing. And if you look at uh, planting for food and jobs, uh, in terms of production, uh, there will be provision of inputs, uh, fertilizer and seed. Uh, marketing, they're also making provision for warehousing. Uh, in the area of extension, they said they are recruiting 1,200 uh, graduates from the agri training colleges to mm. help. So the entire design to us is a, a welcome one. But uh, we need to look further to see whether the implementation, the strategies for implementation yeah. would uh, give us the results. That, that seems for. to be the concern some have already raised. What do you think is the major challenge for Ghana's agri sector? It might be wide and varied, but what is a specific one you'd rather government addresses rather than a launch like this? Is that an easy one? Yeah, um, the major challenge in the agriculture sector today, it's not only production. Marketing is one of them. So as a farmer, before I start to produce, I look at where to sell, the product that consumers are looking for. That's one major challenge. Mm. Now one factor I'll consider, even if I secure the market, what's the current problem? Climate change. You produce and then when you are about harvesting, no water. So mm. I will also consider whether there is availability of water. Now when I'm done with this, now I'll look at what resources are needed. Access to credit is one of them. Mm. And what do you need a credit for? For land preparation, that's tractors and other things. You also need it to um, procure inputs. You need it to um, do other things on the farm. So these are the Key, key challenges, challenges that we are, we are looking I'm sure you have a fair idea of what the <coughs> government policy is. Does it address these concerns? On Kipa, what we've seen so far, uh, it tries to address some of them. But when it comes to what is actually happening, I returned from um, the field last week, and uh, if you go to the middle belt, it has rained. Farmers have, some farmers have actually prepared their lands waiting for uh, inputs. You know, if you take, let me take maize for instance. If you plant maize, the best you need to do if you are applying compound fertilizer, 15-15, two weeks after planting, you need to apply the fertilizer. They are planted. Seeds are not ready. So it means farmers have already used their own safe seed. Meanwhile, as part of this program, um, farmers are supposed to benefit from quality seeds. Yes. That's one. Land preparation is a huge problem. In Buanha, Futechima, Ejra, 
area to plow one acre of a farmland, you pay 100 Ghana cities. Now that component is not being looked at at all. We were in the you mean it's not being addressed no, at no, all? No, 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 no. It's not part of the... Does that fall into the uh, um, access to credit in the budget, component? In the budget. In the budget that was read by the Minister of Finance, mm. they said they were providing 556 tractors in support of this project. Yet there's no... To the best of my knowledge, the farmers are interacted with and my own farms that I'm doing. There is no way there is that we are benefiting from this strategy. So that is already a challenge. Okay. Let, let me bring in uh, Mr. Kariwe here. It, it, are these similar challenges? I mean, it's one sector though, but from where you sit, do you think that the challenges that the peasant farmers and maybe other related farmers face is similar to what your uh, outfit also faces? Yeah, the challenges are the same. And then he has eloquently stated them. And um, it's also about how you arrange to deal with the challenges. You know, agricultural production is such that um, once you miss, it, it, it has to do with time. For instance, if you are supposed to apply fertilizer at a particular time, and then you fail to do that, and subsequently you now apply the fertilizer, you will not get the desired results. So. It is like all the inputs, what you need must be ready. It is not when it is the time for you to apply a particular input, you are now looking for it. Mm. It ought to have been ready. And the example he had cited, if you are talking about high yielding seeds uh, for the purpose of this uh, program, then those seeds must be ready even before plowing. You know, some farmers have already gone ahead mm. to plant with their old seed. So certainly, uh, there has been a constraint there already. Uh, what we only have to appreciate also is that this project, as we have been told, is beginning this year. It's not intended to uh, cover all farmers, and that 200,000 farmers oh, are the covered for the, yeah, the media target. And that subsequent uh, years will uh, now address the larger picture. Mm. Uh, we also hope that uh, while they are doing this, they'll be looking at the, uh, the marketing aspect. You know, if you look at the areas that this program is seeking to uh, address, it takes between three months to four months to be able to complete production. We are talking about rice. Mm. Within three to four months, we are finished. Maize production is done. Now, they are talking about putting up warehouses to uh, save, to accommodate the production. Uh, the question one will ask is that, if you take the, all the districts, you know, how many of those warehouses will be ready by the time you are harvesting, you know? So at least for the, for the pilot phase, yeah. we just look at how government is going to run it, roll it out, and then going forward, how they're going to make it a national uh, agenda. But um, for the sake of time, briefly, uh, if government is to call for your uh, input in finalizing this, how do you think they can address the challenge of marketing? Because it seems when you drive towards Accra, almost always there are foodstuffs along the road that are getting destroyed, tomatoes, to fruits, to all sorts of items almost getting destroyed. How do we deal the issue with the issue of marketing? You know, marketing should have even been the first thing to address it before production. Because every producer would produce in anticipation of the market. You know, so if we are now going to encourage the private sector to go into the production, then of course they will become more concerned about the market. Mm. But if it is government-led program, <laughs> uh, and they think that marketing is not critical, for the private sector, marketing is the first key, key mm. before you now go into production. Mm. Well, once we are not able to market, particularly with agricultural produce, here it is bulky, it is perishable, mm -hmm. I know it is very cumbersome to deal with, to lift the produce from the farm gate to the market center is a huge challenge. So without the market uh, challenge being addressed, of course, the private sector will still be mm. uh, so Your final words, Mr. Mr. Nyaba. Yeah, on the marketing, I, I perfectly agree with uh, 
Mr. Karwe, what I would have expected to hear from government as part of its policy in the first year is to see how we are going to reduce importation. Okay. Take rice, for instance. We import huge chunk of rice into the country. Now, if you put a policy or increase tax on importation, that money can use to address the challenges farmers face in producing or in processing their rice. So they improve on the quality of rice that is provided. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have if I were the one who decides mm -hmm. on what to be done. I will not target two hundred thousand farmers in the first year. I will limit the number of farmers and try to put the infrastructure in place. And then, then you if you put then you gradually scale up to reach to many other people. Okay. All right. So uh, I mean clearly by the time uh, the president is done with his speech and the policy document is out, uh, these two institutions, that is the Peasant Farmers Association and the uh, Agricultural Workers Union GAO would properly analyze it and then would get them back in studio to see how feasible or workable these uh, policies by government would be. We've been speaking with uh, Edward Karua, he's the General Secretary for the Agricultural Workers Union of Ghana, GAU, and then also Charles Nyaba, he's the Programs Officer for the Peasant Farmers um, Association of Ghana. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and I will definitely come back to you after the launch today.